Hi, in this tutorial we're going to look at how to use special characters, also known as special entity characters, in an HTML page. Now you can use special characters to print out characters that you don't normally have available on a keyboard. For example, we're going to include a copyright symbol down here on the copyright line, but that's not a key that's on a keyboard. So we have to use a combination of special characters in order to represent that copyright symbol. We also use special entity characters to represent other characters that are typed by your keyboard, but we want to make sure that they are not encoded when they're sent across the internet. For example, uh, the ampersand symbol is one that's used quite a bit, and we need to encode that with a special character entity. You can see that on this URL line up here that represents where the location is of this particular page, you can see that Devon Ann, and this is representing a space, and then photo, which is the name of the folder that this file is in. And you can see that it's already using a special character in here. It's got a percent sign symbol. So we encode special symbols and characters so that when they are streamed across the internet, they don't get confused with some of these other characters that are automatically encoded. So since there is a percent sign symbol in here that is part of another special encoding, we don't want to use just a plain percent sign symbol in our document. We want to use a character entity so that it will not be confused with something else. Now to get a list of these character entities, I'm going to open up another browser window and go to the WebMonkey website. Now on the WebMonkey website, uh, along the right hand side, at least on the current website design, there is a link for cheat sheets. And if we go into the cheat sheets, you'll see that special characters cheat sheet is one of them that's listed. So I'm going to click to go there and it gives us a list of special character entities. And it describes here to use special characters to show up on your pages. And so this gives us the name code. Sometimes there'll be a number code. Sometimes they will be both, where you could use either one. Shows you an example of what the character is with a short description. So to begin with, I'm going to look for the ampersand. So if I scroll down here, I can see that here is the ampersand symbol and we can use either ampersand amp semicolon or ampersand pound sign 38 semicolon. Well I think this is a little easier to remember so I'm going to use the ampersand amp semicolon. So I'm going to go back to my page and my text editor and I can see in my heading 2 tag where I have military and police I want to replace that with the special character entity. So now if I save my file and then I refresh it in the browser, there's no change because this is the character entity that represents the ampersand symbol. Next I'm going to replace all of the occurrences of the percent sign in here. So I'm going to come back to my special character guide and I'm going to find the percent sign. And I can see here that percent sign is ampersand pound sign 37 semicolon. So I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to come back to my text editor and I'm going to replace each occurrence of the percent sign with that character entity. Okay, and next again I'm going to save my file, refresh it in my browser and make sure everything looks okay. And it still does. Another special character is the dollar sign symbol. So again, I'm going to come back in here and look for the dollar sign, and I'm going to use that character entity and find in my page every occurrence of a dollar sign symbol and replace it with that. Okay, so let me save and we will double check and make sure everything still looks good, which it does. And next, let's put in a copyright symbol. So again, I'll check the special characters, and here it is with copyright, 
I have my choice, so I'm going to use ampersand copy semicolon. Come back to my page and in my editor, I'm going to paste that right in before the word copyright and I'll save my file and now when I refresh it I should see a copyright symbol in my document. So these were examples of replacing existing characters with their character entities and then the copyright symbol is an example of printing out a symbol that isn't typically available on a regular keyboard. Now let's look at some of the other symbols that are in here. Just browse through them so that you become familiar with them. Uh, what I do want to do, we have back to back in our text here, so I want to use an N dash. An N dash is the width of a letter N, and you can see an M dash is wider, it's the width of a letter M. So I'm going to use N dash to replace the hyphens in back to back. All right, and then I'll switch to my browser and then refresh and you can see that there's a slight difference in the hyphen. And there are other times where you may want to print some special characters that you couldn't normally print. For example, since we are using greater than and less than symbols as part of our HTML, if you ever wanted to print a less than symbol on your page and not have it be interpreted as HTML, then we can use an ampersand LT semi for less than and an ampersand GT semi for a greater than symbol. So as you work, be aware that there are special characters that you should encode using special character entities. And one other character entity that I'm going to use on our web page is for a blank space. If I scroll down in the list here, we can see that there is one for a non-breaking space, and it's ampersand NBSP, so non-breaking space. So that one's not too hard to remember. We can use this in cases where we may want to just sort of tweak some spacing a little bit. You may or may not have realized that when you have spaces you have additional spaces in your HTML, the web browser treats them as a single space. So if I come back here and I refresh my page, you'll see that even though I typed in all these spaces between packages and weddings, that it still treats this as a single space. And where we can use that in here is for modifying our navigation. I think on second hand, I really don't want those square brackets in there, and I would like to try to open this up a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is, in my navigation, I'm going to take out all of those spaces and square brackets, and I'm going to put in some of the non-breaking spaces in between each of the elements. So first, let me get rid of these, and let's just save it and see what that looks like before we enter any of the non-breaking spaces. So we just have you know, a single space literally in between each of these. So let me put in a non-breaking space. So it's ampersand NBSP semicolon. And then I'm going to put in another one. So I'll be putting in a bunch. So I'm going to copy. So let's just see what it looks like between gallery and pricing with two non-breaking spaces. And that looks pretty good. So I think I'm going to copy this and put it at the end of these other lines. Now I don't need one after contact at the end unless it gets too close to the end. So let me save my file and refresh it in the browser. And I think that looks pretty good. I like it better without the square brackets around there. It's much more clear. So as you're looking at the code in your pages, pay attention and consider places where you may need to replace some special characters with some of the special character encoding. 